welcome to the Crypto Vibes Podcast, your weekly recap of news of what's happening in the world of crypto, blockchain, and future web. We aggregate news throughout the week to provide a condensed version. It's definitely not all the news for the week, but everything we cite is available on our website at cryptopodcast.xyz. This is year 2023, week 7, episode 45. I am your host, Neil Alonzo, and hopefully you've had a good week. And before we dive into everything, some disclosures. We are not financial advisors, wealth managers, lawyers, brokers, or CPAs. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment advice. And to kick off our thoughts for the week, it's a recurring thought, and it definitely brings AI to the forefront. In our opinion, it's going to need the same regulation scrutiny that's happening with crypto right now. OpenAI actually, as of February 16th, made a blog post talking about their approach to the evolving system through human use. In full candid nature, some of the companies that we work with are talking a lot about how human information is going to help inform AI as far as feedback and biased. Because if you use chat GPT right now, there's some really interesting results that can happen. And it's not just open AI, it's just that they become the poster child for it because they're the ones that are really good at marketing, branding themselves right now. But there is an accountability and liability issue that's going to be coming to the forefront. And we hope it does because we know a lot of creatives who are not too thrilled about their artwork being utilized for muses of generative nature. And one other thought this week, please do not fuck around with your taxes when it comes to crypto. If the juice is worth the squeeze, going back in time for crypto taxes will become a new tactic for all things IRS. And in step with that, one of the headlines for this week was from OpenAI's blog post, and it says, how should AI systems behave and who should decide? Question. In the post, they articulate the way that in which they're going to evolve. And we can only hope everyone in AI is looking in that direction. In a bit of corporate news, YouTube CEO Susan Wuchitsky is stepping down after nine years. Nine years as CEO of YouTube, but she's been with the company 25 years, 20 years plus. Yeah, I want to say she was employee number 16 at Google. That's pretty awesome. If you'd like to learn more about some of her, you know, escapades in Google, there's a book on Audible that I've been listening to called Like, Comment, and Subscribe. It's pretty cool. It's a really rich history and story of Google. Another headline this week, what Gary Gensler's crypto crackdown means for VCs. This was from the term sheet newsletter on fortune.com. It's a good thought piece. We have a link in our show notes. More SEC headlines. SEC to make it harder for hedge funds to work with crypto firms. This is per Bloomberg. The rule change would make it harder for crypto firms to become, quote, qualified custodians. Because as of Wednesday this last week, the Security Exchange Commission voted four to one to expand a custody rule for registered investment advisors to custody customer assets beyond funds or securities, including crypto, with qualified custodians. According to the report, the proposed rule change is designed to ensure that customer assets are properly segregated and held in custody with certain protections to ensure they are available in events of issues. Make of it what you will. You can dive in our show notes to click through the links and read more for yourselves. The SEC sues Terraform Labs Duquan for misleading investors on Terra USD stablecoin. In the byline, the collapse of Terra USD last year led to a wave of bankruptcies in the crypto industry. Yeah, it led to a lot of bankruptcies in the crypto industry, but it seems also, too, that a lot of those business models had flaws. In other headline news this week, Paxos will halt minting new BUSD tokens. Existing tokens remain fully backed and redeemable through Paxos Trust Company through at least February 2024. This is per a press release on Paxos.com. So we have a link for you to read in our show notes. And I love the way it leads off on the press release after that. It says, Paxos, the leading regulated blockchain and tokenization infrastructure platform announced that will end its relationship with Binance for branded stablecoin BUSD the leading regulated blockchain and tokenization infrastructure platform. I repeated that because that's an interesting way for them to self-declare where they're at. In a Wall Street Journal article, 
Let's take a look here. Crypto giant Binance expects to pay penalties to resolve U.S. investigations. Well, I mean, yeah. The DOJ, CFTC have been probing world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. I mean, they want to resolve these investigations and just pay the penalty. If they really need a class in this, they could probably just call up BP, right? Another headline and some regulation. Canada close to tightening rules for crypto exchanges, per sources. The changes will ensure it's simply too expensive to do business in Canada, said one person familiar with the plans. That's just funny. Canada is usually less expensive than, let's say, the United States. So your loony or toony is not going to go that far if you're trying to conduct crypto exchange business in Canada. In another headline, Sony teams up with A-Star Network for Web3 Incubation Program. In the byline, Sony Network Communications hopes the program will explore, quote, how blockchain technology can solve various problems in their industry. So here's the funny thing about these companies teaming up with these networks for incubation and accelerator programs. I mean, it just shows that they don't want to take on all the risk and just want to speed it up at the same time, right? And how they're going to evolve their business strategies for any new tech that's happening. It's kind of surprising that some of these really massive big companies have not created a framework or a model to how they adopt new technology as it comes out because this is an ever-changing landscape this isn't the first time that sony's ever seen new technology why would they not have some sort of ongoing framework model protocol flywheel effect on how they move with times right it just seems silly it seems really inefficient have a couple of NFT news headlines back to back to back for you. France's Centre Pompidou Museum acquires NFTs. Now, this is a CoinMarket.com article. This is a CoinMarketCap.com article, and we have to say it's another great sign for adoption, right? I mean, a museum acquiring NFTs. That should say something. K-pop girl group. Triple S dances to tune fans vote via NFT inspired governance. Ooh, NFT inspired governance. Now, that's a mouthful and that's a loaded statement in our opinion. There's a lot of regulation that's going to be coming down in the hands of governance. The word governance just doesn't come across the palette real well, does it? But hopefully, because there's going to be a big need for governance, it can work out well for them. Blurring the battle lines on OpenSea royalties for NFT creators. This is a story on blockworks.co, and it talks about Blur, an NFT marketplace in OpenSea. And in the byline, it states, Upstart NFT marketplace Blur tells creators to block their collections from trading on OpenSea. Now, I completely understand coming at it with that strategy, that aggression. But here's the thing, and this is just one person's opinion, right? You want to play nice and you don't want to play nice necessarily for, you know, being a good person. I'm of the opinion playing nice in this space is a good business strategy, more so than just being a good person, because you want people to be able to sell, resell, acquire NFTs in a number of places over the life of the NFT. It's very short-sighted to think that it's going to be a one-stop shop in a lot of ways. There needs to be more adoption for inoperability. Now, there will be primary places that will rise up as far as the marketplaces. But in the world of NFTs, there's no reason why you have to go through a marketplace other than discovery. There's a discovery mechanism that's going to happen with aggregators that will solve a lot of problems. But maybe it just ends up being the same way that we currently do business. You know, when you think of travel, there's a lot of aggregators or you could book directly through the hotel. But the hotels, you know, they charge different rates than if you go through an aggregator. So a lot of these things play out as well. These are questions to ask the industry because shouldn't we learn from those, you know, case studies of how things went and how the market shifted and the different business models that popped up. Nothing that's happening in the marketplace of NFTs is necessarily blue ocean. It's very much, you know, playing out in the same way that other industries played out when technology came into place. Similar to travel. In a headline that just, it just seems like it's almost a back to the future statement. Napster begins planned acquisition spree amid shift to Web3. The byline 20-plus-year-old music service has acquired Mint Songs 
and Napster CEO says the company is eyeing more deals with the, quote, best of breed tech partners. Not every company is as good as acquiring things like Disney. Disney was able to acquire Pixar and really keep, you know, the sales on that ship going in the right direction for quite some time before there were some hiccups or bumps in the road. Not every acquisition ends up great. Not to say that this one will work out wonderfully for Napster, but it'll be interesting to see how this acquisition does play out. In a headline on coinmarketcap.com, Coinbase ready to fight SEC over crypto staking service. Brian Armstrong said the exchange will, quote, happily defend its Coinbase earned staking service in court days after competitor Kraken paid a $30 million fine and ended its program. Yeah, I would imagine he'd happily defend. There's been other articles, and we've cited them even on our Crypto Vibes podcast, you know, from last year, where Coinbase sees staking as a heavy percentage of their revenue. We see staking service as a wonderful, profitable service, especially if you can tie a nice GUI around it and make it more user-friendly. Imagine being able to go in through your Apple TV and just selecting what you want to stake, and it just all works out so nice and pretty, and you have a nice dashboard. Why that hasn't been built yet? Beyond me. There is a lot of rumblings that it is being built in a number of different ways. Another headline, politicians demand to know if SEC was involved in timing of SBF's arrest. In an article excerpt, a pair of powerful members of the U.S. House of Representatives are demanding to know if the Security Exchange Commission was involved in the timing of Sam Bankman frieds arrest. In an excerpt, it says, In a letter to the SEC, politicians demanded internal communications as well as any communication between the agency and the Department of Justice related to the arrest. I think this is a valid request, right? And in our last bit of news for the week, again, it's not all the news for the week, but can Paris Hilton find you a date or a mate in the metaverse? In the byline, the queen of the metaverse has built a month-long dating game in the sandbox where six strangers complete quests and choose a possibly real-life partner. I mean, this is definitely intertwining reality television for as real as it is real. <laughs> And metaverse way of doing things. It's funny how a person's brand, individual brand, can be a crux to have more adoption, right? Now, at the heart of something like this, you would hope people would be able to find love. And we would imagine that the metaverse is another way for humans to connect and find love for one another. But it's also going to be a heavy, heavy marketplace where there's a lot of profit to be made. There's going to be even more catfishing. There'll be a whole new phrase. It's not going to be catfishy anymore. I wonder what it'll be this next time around of how it ends up being called and labeled. Well, there you go. And thank you to Good Soup Music for that intro and outro song. This show comes out, Crypto Vibes, every Saturday at some point in time, but every Saturday nonetheless, excluding some holidays, but we'll let you know. This show is produced by Vocal Visual. Again, I'm your host, Neil Alonzo, and if you found value in what we're doing, please share it with others who doesn't like to share value. We are cautiously optimistic and hopefully pessimistic on crypto. Have a great weekend. <laughs>